Hi there. Welcome to Worlds Collide, the podcast where I talk to people who moved abroad. I am your host, Victoria, and I just wanted to say welcome to the podcast. Thank you for listening to the podcast and especially to the new listeners. Hello. So don't forget to push the follow button in the corner of your app so you will always get notified when there is a new episode coming out. And if you are listening on YouTube, then don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so uh, this always first. And now I have this one question for you. So this weekend, I was chatting with a group of people that I didn't know. And so this one person asked me this question. So how long have you been in the United States? And my answer was um, over a decade. And... Her answer then was, oh, so not that long. So I was like, hmm, it kind of feels long or like it is long to me. And what does it mean for or for you guys to live abroad for a long time? So when is it short? When is it long? So please let me know your opinion on that. Okay. All right. So. Now I want to come to introducing today's guest. Um, so meet Vadi. He's the only person who probably says traffic in Los Angeles is not bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, he is originally from Istanbul and enjoys the California lifestyle. And he's also an entrepreneur. So we talk a lot about business relations, the differences in talking business between Europe, Turkey and the United States. So stay tuned for a lot of information and insights for that, because I think when you are also coming to the United States on business purposes, I think this conversation can be really helpful for you. Then we also talk a lot about his travel adventures through the United States, which is always fun and I can relate because I love doing road trips here in this country. And and then, of course, like why he chose the United States and a lot of other things. All right. Here is Vadi. Hi, my guest today is Vadi. Hi, how are you? Hi, uh, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good too. Thanks for being on the podcast. Sure. It's a pleasure. So um, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Istanbul, originally, Turkey, and I live in Los Angeles right now. Yeah, okay, you're speech. in Los Angeles. And uh -huh. uh, what brought you to LA? Yeah, so I mean, I uh, had the chance to, you know, visit many times. I uh -huh. used to travel a lot and see different countries. And I also work in media and technology. Okay. So, you know, living and working in California was like, a, you know, like the opportunities and, you know, lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot of like music, entertainment, movies, you know, mm -hmm. and the great lifestyle. So beach life, which uh -huh. attracted me also here. And, okay. you know, you can also drive just to Silicon Valley and uh, also talk business or, you know, Yeah, we did a couple of times, actually. <laughs> I mean, what, it's like a, uh, well, it's like a, what, three or four hour drive. It's not, yeah, oh, it's yeah, still yeah. okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. For like Great American, for, yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. And for American um, uh, distances, it's actually quite close. Yeah, yeah. After living in the US, you know, like uh, when in Europe, I was like, okay, we fly like three hours, five hours. It's like a distance. Here, you need to fly like 14 hours, a couple times a year. Yeah, and then yeah, it's like, exactly. okay, we just like a couple months ago, we fly to Australia and we were like, okay, 8 a.m. we landed and now let's start, uh, you know, like walking around, discovering. So you lose the, uh, you know, yeah. that. The feeling for distance, you definitely lose it because yeah. always when I am um, visiting my family, it's the same. It's like, oh, um, yeah, it's just like, an hour or two hours drive and they're like oh my god that's so far <laughs> you know an hour that's like a day trip <laughs> you know yeah. and Actually, it's like oh, yeah. it's nothing <laughs> yeah i drew, i had my record here in the u.s i drove from austin to los angeles in oh, four, uh, four days in four seven days hours a day yeah seven hours a day 
mm-hmm. and it's like uh, and one time when I first moved from New York to Los Angeles in 30 yeah. days that was more like a road trip that was a but road it was trip. still a lot of yeah a lot of like a big uh, you know but we did a- and everything yeah we did also the trip um uh-huh. Austin to or San Francisco to Austin okay. and we also did four days Uh, yes, and but, which destinations did you take? Because it's more from mm, north. Oh, so we did, we did, so we did San Francisco, and then we stayed in Los Angeles, uh-huh. and then we did Tucson. Ah, okay. So you took the path from south. Yeah, Tucson uh-huh. is very cool, very cool, uh, uh, hipster city, and very cheap, right? Yeah, we stayed in this um, under Canva. Have you heard of it? This like uh, glamping. Side. Okay, this so it's like in the desert, and it's like beneath uh-huh. or like next to like all the huge cacti, uh-huh. and they're like really nice, fancy tents yeah. with like a real bed inside. I'll check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah. nice. And then and then we drove from there to Roswell uh-huh. because you know my husband wanted to see all the alien stuff. Oh, ah, okay, <laughs> that's cool. So, yeah. uh, did you see anything interesting? I mean, we went to the alien museum. Okay, you know, and then we had, the, we had one in Istanbul in the nineties. What alien an alien? Museum. An alien yeah, museum. There was an alien museum in okay. Istiklal Street. Uh-huh. So not anymore. But there was like a puppet alien greeting people on the street to promote it. It's uh, like a cult, okay. cult place, yeah. <laughs> oh, funny! Yeah, so we did that, and then we drove, and then we did like one smaller stop in Texas. I think it was called. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I, it's um. Marfa. It's, no, 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 not that time. We went to Marfa, uh-huh. but not that time. Um, San An- San Angelo. San Antonio, maybe. San Angelo. That's a, that's it's a nice like San- ah, okay, then it's maybe San Angelo. City. Yeah, smaller okay. city. It's like five hours from Austin. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's uh, exciting to discover, you know, even this continent, Latin America. And so one of the reasons uh, I thought, okay, I can uh, live in USA, maybe a couple of years and just discover the worst, you know, you can see Latin America travel around. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and how long are you now in LA? Okay. So it's my fifth year, but actually during pandemic, You know, oh. like everybody, <laughs> like everybody, I, yeah. I traveled a little bit. So I was in L.A. Uh, when the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. And after a while, after vaccination, I took a year traveling around Mexico. I stayed in Berlin, in Germany, also three months, mm-hmm. New York, a couple months. So like remote work. But then I got back to L.A. So like total five years now, but I stayed in L.A. four years Okay, and so wait, how could you travel in the pandemic, or just when it was almost over? Yes, so because after the vaccination, you know, it, ah, it started. Okay, okay. So Texas was quite open, by the way, and yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, like uh, in uh, pandemic, I went to Austin a couple months, and then got the vaccination, and mm-hmm. then started traveling. Yeah, I see. Okay, so it was after the vaccination because I always yeah, think like yeah, sure. the lockdown, you know, when nothing was open and like all no. the all the flights didn't go anywhere. Yeah, that was in California. Yeah, I know that was a the very very hard lockdown. Yeah, that was also a very like a challenging time, you know, mm-hmm. because I moved in 2019 summer. And uh-huh. had like amazing six months that year. Yeah. Summer, like um, road trip, discovery. And then, you know, like I could stay one month in New York and then have all this road trip and chat with a lot of people who live in the US, do different uh-huh. things, you know, took my time. And then I started doing stuff like I started working and doing a little bit like meetings, joining like interesting going to San Francisco, going to Vegas for electronic summits, stuff sure. like that, like because I work in technology. And uh-huh. I'm like doing all those plans. And then the pandemic started, you know, after all those trauma, I was like, what am I doing here? And like, it's just another corner of the world, you know? Yeah. That, but that was a feeling in pandemic, mm-hmm. being far away to friends and family. That was something, uh, I think a US feeling maybe, because in Europe you are more close to, friends and family right and, you know and so did you go to the u.s by yourself 
Uh, I moved on my own, uh, yeah, but now I um, live with my partner, my girlfriend, uh, together mm-hmm. since uh, more than two years. Okay. But when I was moving, yeah, I was on my own. Okay, so you met her in Los Angeles? New York. Oh, New York, but you met yeah, her during in New that, York. that year, okay. that year when I was traveling, yeah. Okay, okay, good. What was for you when you got there the biggest culture shock? Okay, so in the U.S., uh-huh. So I should have said I lived in Germany like five years uh-huh. and <laughs> I, uh, I worked uh, with French business partners. So mm-hmm. as, a, as a partner in a French uh, business group, three mm-hmm. years. So that uh-huh. was also an amazing uh, experience. And, you know, also in Europe, a lot of, because I'm Turkish, a lot of exposure to the Middle East and East Europe. Like yeah. even my family, we have some Balkan background or, you know, it's like okay, a Okay, sure. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of like uh, culture uh, mixing mm-hmm. in my environment, but still living in the U.S. is a different experience. So because as a Turkish person, you look you look at the West, so you see like Germany or U.K. or France, you know, like Western cultures. And for me, American culture was also something like that. But when I come here to live, not only for travel, Mm-hmm. You see significant differences. I think that's something uh, really like not shocking, but uh, you know, like you learn, you experience. So uh, you know, so that's interesting for me. Um, like um, like what? Like what? For example, Europe is, um, for example, more sophisticated or culture oriented, or a little bit more like separate identities of uh, countries and cultures and languages, you know? Uh Yeah. In U.S., you have more like the mainstream culture and uh, then local identities around it. But there is a way of like a transactional culture or uh, businesses very uh, impacting everything around or American way of living in, how can I say, like the special days impacting like uh, I say, like maybe three hundred million living in one continent, and the distances are far away. Okay. But there is one language, so it's like uh, I see a lot of people moving around US, and mm-hmm. it's it's different. You know, for example, in Europe, you are from Amsterdam, or you are from Paris, or you are from Istanbul. So you have like your circle and identity, and then it's still mixing. Mm-hmm. But here, people, I think. Um, they have families in different parts of the U.S. and mm-hmm. for like career reasons or something else for academy, they have to change, go to another part of continent, and they maybe stay away for a while. You know, like it's uh, it's also it's, different lifestyle. Do you mean it's like still the same country, but it's like just so far away? But yeah. you know, I I cannot agree with you a hundred percent. But okay. but um. This is since I moved. I think when I lived uh-huh. only like in one state, I uh-huh. probably would have said the same back then. Mm-hmm. But now, um, so now, so we, I lived first in California and uh-huh. now I'm in Texas. So, mm-hmm. and like the states are like complete opposite, right? Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, it's like the landscape is completely different. Nature is completely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The culture here is also completely different. And then the, I mean, Mm -hmm. of course, politics, you know, it's like Mm -hmm. it's sheer opposites. And like if I go just, for example, one state further, for example, Mm -hmm. Louisiana. Louisiana Mm -hmm. has also so many different cultures, you know, because there's a big influence from the French, you know, and all the writing, the food is different, all the Creole Mm -hmm. stuff. And I think if you go like from state to state, they're all so different. But they, of course, you're right. They speak the same language. Yeah, definitely. There is diversity and different cultures mixing. Mm. And uh, but it's like a huge continent and sharing also a lot of things in common. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. The same fast food chains and the <laughs> and also it's like everything is very quick. You know, very quick. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, they're like. Uh, so you see it uh, in a lot of places. Right. And when you when you got there, when you not decided just for mm-hmm. traveling, but for moving, mm-hmm. um, what like stuck out to you? Like what was like, hey, this is like so different. Mm-hmm. 
in the US, you mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, um, when living in Europe, I feel less of an individual because many conversations I start or be a part of in Europe mm -hmm. is somehow rooted with your where you are from or you know what I mean? Okay. So in, in the US, I can be more maybe uh, somebody who is doing a particular business or who has a particular hobby. People are more into communicating with other people with their what they are into or what they are doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But in Europe, um, I think also people have maybe more like cultural uh, prejudices. That's how I felt many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is you know, it... still, when I go some, um, for example, here and um, when I have transactions with European people, I mm -hmm. sometimes still feel it, you know, even like people okay. visiting, not living here. Living here, yeah. maybe it's just like more like a melting pot. Okay. But um, like business events or expos or something like big events, people uh -huh. visiting, you know, they bring their attitudes or... Right, things right. They used to do with them, and then I can feel like, ah, okay, okay, you know what I mean. So it's different. Is it? Uh, do you mean they're more hesitant because when they know where you, where you're from, or? Um, I mean, maybe because uh, how can I say? Maybe here more like, you know, people call it a transactional culture. People also focus on what you do, what you are looking for, and mm -hmm. if there's anything in it for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it's all like business reasons. Yeah, kind and of. also people also, I mean, being an American is also, most of the people are also immigrants and moved here and grown mm -hmm. up, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or when also uh, people from not US move here, they also have a mission to maybe establish themselves here, grow mm -hmm. here, or it's also challenging to uh, live here. I mm -hmm. think like I cannot really uh, give the reasoning, but if you live somewhere which is 10, 15 hours to your home country, and if you live somewhere maybe one, two hours to your home country, it's different challenges, you know? So maybe okay. that will be even impacting the uh, people and, you know, yeah, how, how they are, how they live or their uh, motivations or routing. Yeah. Are there many Turkish people in LA? Uh, I have a lot of friends and uh, more Turkish people in East Coast. So uh -huh. a lot in, I think the most uh, Turkish people in the US are in New Jersey. Ah, and some okay. in New York, I think Boston, maybe, you know, like more like East Coast mm -hmm. and some in California. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I um, have a good friend here from Turkey. <laughs> and so I know like a few of her friends who are from Turkey. <laughs> uh, but when I was still in California, I didn't, I don't recall at least meeting a lot of <laughs> Turkish people. Yeah, sure. There is also, I think, in Houston and around in Texas. Mm -hmm, it's yeah. like a big community. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yes, she was originally in Houston, so maybe. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Houston, yeah. Houston, I guess it's also one of the big uh, okay. communities there. Uh, yeah. yeah. And um, so when you moved there, I mean, but you said you visited many times, but what were your expectations like? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my expectations. First, uh, I, I've been curious, so I wanted to experience the lifestyle. And, uh -huh. you know, um, tall can get in touch with as many people as possible. She experience, listen, learn, you know, grow. And uh -huh. then decide like my, like I had a business in Turkey and I sold this business to this international company, as I uh, uh -huh. said. And then I had like, a, okay, what can I do? You know, what I want to do in my life. And then I decided I want to live in an English speaking country for mm -hmm. the longer term, because I wanted to be somewhere where I can root, you know, and okay. do maybe global business and be interacting with more like an international melting pot place. So I was thinking about London and I, mm -hmm. I was already, you know, visiting London many times, many years and have a lot of friends and family there also. And, um, but I thought, you know, London is easy choice. 
you can go uh-huh. stay a couple of hours. I've been already there, done that. But US is more like, because still in my 30s, why not, you know, I've been growing up with hearing about a lot of like maybe American movies, music, sure. Silicon Valley. It's very impactful culture. And I thought now if I, if I'm going to live in the US, I'm going to do it right now, you know, yeah. because it's easy to come back. I can live in Berlin or London or, you know, like, or go back to Turkey, live in Southern Turkey, whatever you can do. Also, if you get older or, you know, mm-hmm. but living in the US is more like a challenging task. Okay. And I had the opportunity and the time. So I said, like, let's go and just discover and decide if you want to do it or if you, you know, uh, if not. So like uh, in pandemic, I was even thinking, OK, should I stay in the US or should I not? And I had, the, mm-hmm. you know, the all one visa, which is for three years. Uh, OK. And it's quite flexible. It's just like I can have the visa. I can live somewhere else. I can come back to the US. So I was like thinking, Oh, maybe I should live in Europe uh-huh. and just US, I can have a 10 year visa, come do my meetings, do whatever, go back, you know. I, but then I said, you have the uh, residence permit three years and, you know, the pandemic still going on. Just stay, just, you know, uh, do discover and then you can decide when your visa is ending, if you want to extend or not. Ah, uh, Okay. And then you extend it? Yeah, because I fell in love and uh. I extended it and the business <laughs> is also going and pandemic is away. So it's like personal reasons and also, you know, private reasons. And uh, uh-huh. also, I mean, making something here, creating something here. For example, now I have a new company and I have some American investors. I started working with some reputable college as a resident entrepreneur. So you experience, you see things. There was uh-huh. these challenges and this pandemic and you know what I mean? But then you also meet inspiring people. You have like a good lifestyle here in California. It's just like a, so you can enjoy, you can do things. And also when you are happy emotionally and you have like a mission as a person, I think it all impacts your journey. Yeah. So how is your lifestyle then different now in California than in where you were before. I mean, you moved around a lot, uh-huh. but let's say how it would be in Turkey. Okay, so the places I lived for a longer time, first, you know, Istanbul, which is a big, big city, very dynamic. It's also quite tiring. It's a lot uh, of people, okay. you know, not a lot of rec- recreational places in Istanbul. Oh, That's you a don't? Challenge. Oh, not I much. Not. Yeah, it's just like a not very healthy lifestyle. It's like outdoor life. It's like challenging. Of course, there's Bosporus. It's mm-hmm. amazing to visit, to live, to experience 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Great city. But, you know, like, for example, here, plenty of space. Istanbul is like New York, maybe, you know. It's like a very busy, it's very tiring. Busy, busy, busy. Uh-huh. But California is so much space. We go play tennis, go to the beach. It's just like, a, you know... You have all of this in front of you, and uh, the weather is the always beach? nice. Huh? Are you close to the beach? Yeah. So we were living right at the beach, like next block. Now okay. 15 minutes walk, so a little bit far away. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, this is good. Because, I mean, LA is big. You could also live like yeah. an hour away from the beach. Yeah. When I first moved, I was more near to Maros, which was like 40 uh-huh. minutes to the beach. It was more like a central neighborhood near to West Hollywood downtown and around the city. Right, right. You know, it was more like logistically central LA. Mm -hmm. But now we are at the beach. And uh, I mean, so I like it. And for example, in Germany, I was a student. And Ah, then I was working a little bit, but it was right at the 2008 crisis, you know, big, big Mm -hmm, crisis. mm -hmm. And I was just doing something and... You know, living as a student somewhere is also quite different than, uh, you know, when you make a living, when you yeah, have yeah. opportunities and income and, you know, yeah. so it's, uh, yeah. My summer in Berlin three years ago was quite fun. So it was okay. like a more like, you know, adult life. And right. so now Berlin also developed a lot uh, because I was a student there 20 years ago. So, yeah. You said the way you had your um, business where you worked the whole time that was in Istanbul 
Yeah, so I had my own business for nine years. Ah, uh, okay. After I moved back from Germany, I started my okay. own thing. Yeah, in Germany, I was uh, studying and then I worked a little while, you know. And then okay. I had my own business in Turkey and then France and now US, still doing my own thing. Yeah, okay. now in the US. Mm -hmm. And how, how would you say f uh, does the um, work-life balance work? in the u.s because everybody i talk to here on this podcast especially who moves uh -huh. away who moves away from the u.s is complaining about the uh the working mm -hmm. uh the working hours and not even the working hours but like the the work expectations yeah the culture is like um it's people really work a lot yeah that's uh, completely different from europe for example so people work they work a lot they work day and night you know of course not everybody but there is a dominant culture like this mm -hmm. and um also i think the i mean i'm not working on a corporation with wage so i'm not an employee mm -hmm. i'm an entrepreneur and right. i've been also doing consultancy work so i've been quite flexible but when i am part of a project i can see that people are so responsive quick you know mm -hmm. i like that doing business here is so practical like and uh, not like in middle east or east europe it's just like it takes a lot of time to get your payments for example in turkey or around the uh -huh. you know like region or in us it's just like people have a tendency to pay quickly you know everything is like protected very quick transactions yeah. but also how can i say People work a lot. There is not much work-life balance, like you said. And uh, you need to have really good resources to have the balance. And if you want to have a better life quality, better, uh, how can I say, if you, like, now we don't have a child, for example, mm -hmm. and we want to have, and this will increase a lot of costs, you know, mm -hmm. here. And a lot of things are here bought with money. And hiring people is expensive. Getting mm -hmm. service is expensive. And, uh, you know, all these things makes U.S. a very competitive and expensive place to live. And mm -hmm. especially since a couple of years, you know, with the inflation and so. Yeah. I also observe a lot of people, you know, even struggling or so. It's just like everybody has their own, you know, like there are people who made amazing, like, success or opportunities or created, you know. But yeah. there are also uh, a lot of like challenges living here. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yes, because I mean, like as, as somebody said to me, like especially for the people who move mm -hmm. to the US, they're not aware of how hard it is for like the the mm -hmm. Americans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. It's not easy. It's uh, people work a lot. They expect the best. And I observe also there is less tolerance if you make a mistake or, you know what I mean? People yeah. expect you to be very, like, clear on what you do, what you sell, what you expect. Oh, here you mean you're not allowed to make a mistake? It's just like uh, I see, um, you know, like, people are very, um, they don't have much time. And, you know, they want to they wanna work with the people who are expert in their field. And mm -hmm. who are prepared. If you are like that, you can uh, progress quickly. Yeah. But I think it took me some time to see and understand the culture. Because it's like in Turkey or in the uh, Middle East, you can have more like relations. You know, you talk, you get to know each other. Ah, you okay. chat about things. You have long conversations. Uh -huh. And people love doing that. Here, not exactly like that, you know. Just oh, like very, very practical, very quick. Yeah. So it's like, give me the answer right now. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't have yeah. time for this because they don't have time, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. That's also what I uh, understand after a while, that people are also short on time. And what about traffic for you? Do you, I mean, mm -hmm. you live in the traffic city of the world, I feel like. What yeah. do you think of traffic? So I don't have like a long commute because I mostly work at home or uh -huh. just like I had a couple offices and I always pick them like walking distance to my okay, uh, home. Perfect. You know? Good choice. Right now yeah. it's like 15 minute walk from uh -huh. my apartment. And uh, so I didn't, but 
of course, sometimes I need to go to Hollywood or downtown or like a, uh-huh. a different. And uh, then it might take some time to go. But also Istanbul was uh, quite big on traffic. Okay. So when I compare, Los Angeles traffic is much, much, much better than Istanbul traffic. Oh, oh, it's just a plus for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's surprising for many people living here. I'm like, I love it. It's not much traffic, you know, because in Istanbul, they, they block the roads or you need to cross the bridge and it, it might take really long time. So I was planning everything in Istanbul around the traffic times, which uh-huh. increase and increase and increase after a while, you know, and yeah. uh, now here is easier. But it's funny because like when we moved to Austin, Uh-huh. We're also saying oh, like you're in Austin now. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't know. Uh-huh. So uh, we were always saying that oh, traffic is not bad, uh-huh. <laughs> and yeah. everybody around us is like traffic is the worst, and we're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's uh-huh. not bad because we yeah. were used to whatever sitting in traffic, not moving traffic for like an hour, right? Each yeah. direction. And then here it's like 20 minutes, you know. So it's yeah, like... you can go anywhere to be <laughs> What part of Austin are you? South oh, or... no, well, now north. Uh-huh. When, when we okay. first moved, we were like in the downtown area. Uh-huh. But yeah, now north there's like... some construction going on because I was there like a couple months ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's always construction, it's like yeah. growing. My daughter just yeah. asked me today, why are there always so many cranes in Austin? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, A lot going on. Yeah, a lot going on. When you moved to the US, Mm -hmm. how Mm -hmm. was your English? Yeah, my English was quite fine. Yeah, Yeah. I also speak German, but like I can admit, I German is the first foreign language I learned. So because Uh, uh, yeah, I was a student in a German high school in Istanbul. Uh, Ah, okay. Istanbul Gymnasium is like. So um, eight years, uh, this like um, like immersion, two, like two year German education, and then six year of uh, high school with like you know physics, chemistry, mathematics like that, and uh-huh. uh, then you got abitur like ger- uh-huh. German yep. diploma, and uh, so I started learning German before English. But uh, English is much easier than German. Uh, so it's like, you know, it's easy to express yourself. Right. And so although I'm fluent in German, because like when I was living and working in Germany, you only of speak course Turkish? I had much more practical. No, nah, you can do in <laughs> Berlin. You can, you can survive in Berlin in, in, with Turkish. You can, you can survive sure. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, in like Köln also. I also um, yeah. lived in Aachen and Köln for a little uh, bit okay. because I was in Erwete Aachen. And then um, it's just like, uh, how can I say? Uh, in, For example, science, you have a lot of German or literature. Uh-huh. Yeah. But uh, because I do mostly like marketing or computer right, science, right, right. it's hard for me to adapt to the English uh, things uh, speaking in German. So it's like a challenge. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, but it's usually those words are in English, right? Yeah, and then yeah, you yeah. Just... But in Germany, people say like, you know, like, uh, and we can, for example, not uh, yeah, develop, yeah. Okay, to develop. You know, like, things like that or like... Uh, right, right. Uh, there are a lot of... I get yeah. used to it, yeah. Okay, so you said you don't want to really talk about too much personal stuff, but I want to ask you, when you moved uh-huh. to LA, okay, how did you find a place to stay? Like, The first, mm-hmm. the, you, okay. how was, where did you start uh, in the okay. beginning? Yeah, I can tell more about the procedures and technical yeah. studies for sure. So that was also an experience because like, um, for example, when I came to New York, first I'm, I fly to New York with like two luggages, okay? I was uh-huh. like, let's spend some time in the US. I had six months tourist visa. And yeah. then I could just say I stay three months and go back and maybe yeah. I move to London. I don't know. You know, it was just decision. So I came to New York. I started, you know, I sublet a friend's apartment. They ah, were going to, okay. uh, they were mm-hmm. going to travel. So they ah, were okay. going to be gone like a month. So I was like, okay, mm-hmm. one month in New York. And it was like June. Perfect. Okay. You know? And then, you know, meeting people, I even uh, researched a little bit. I was like, okay, if I want to stay in the US, what I'm going to do? So I met some lawyers. I met some people who did it before, you know. And mm-hmm. then about LA, I already had a couple of good friends here. 
like a high school mm-hmm. friend, a college friend, you know, and yeah. uh, people I met before or I met around the world for different businesses or things and then who moved to L.A. So when I came to L.A., you know, I just uh, got like an Airbnb for a while. And, oh, then, okay. and then, you know, like I was asking people and first I thought I can get a furnished place, furnished rental. Mm-hmm. But really, like when people, when you want to uh, get a furnished rental or get like a lease, even anything, they ask for like uh, social security. Are you living here? You know, and because I was report. like, huh? And yeah, all report. those things. Yeah, and you don't then, have uh, it. You don't have it. Mm-hmm. I was like, because I was thinking maybe now it's been like five years. I don't exactly remember, but maybe get like a furnished place for three months. Let's see if I'm going to get a visa approval, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But then it was like everybody was asking about this. And then a friend of mine told me, oh, there is this like a place called Park La Brea, which is like near to LACMA and Maros. It's like a managed apartment complex. So there are mm-hmm. maybe like 300 apartments there. And then you go there, you can rent from a company and it's easier. Yeah. They rent uh, to foreigners. You need to show some cash in the bank, you know, like, uh, uh, okay. yeah, like oh, you can, you need to show me like 12 month rental uh, uh, okay. in your bank account, then it's okay. So I uh, did something okay. like that. Yeah. So I, so I got like a bank uh, approval and then just okay. rented from the company and it was unfurnished. So okay. I had to buy some furniture, you know. Sure. Yeah. But uh, so okay, so if you if you're lucky and you have the income or the money, then it's yeah, it's I think doable. so. Yeah, because, yeah, it's easier. Yeah, yeah because US. like um, when I when I think back, like I always lived with roommates mm-hmm. in the beginning, mm-hmm. and um, so the first place when I was a student, um, I think she was like, okay, you're a student, of course you don't. Mm-hmm. And then I, I remember like um, when I came back to the US as an intern, mm-hmm. the the place where I then ended up, she was like also really nice. I just, mm-hmm. we just got along. So that's where she rented it. But we had like another roommate and she mm-hmm. was like, wait, you didn't ask her for her social security number she doesn't have a credit report how can mm-hmm. you rent to her that is so ah, irresponsible okay, so, yeah. you know so she was really against it because mm-hmm. she's like no 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 it's like what if she's a scammer or something right yeah like, i think all right like, yeah. um how do you do it and then mm-hmm. um and then later uh, when i moved here um mm-hmm. i also Mm-hmm. My friend, she was like the the main tenant of like a house, mm-hmm. and she had like five rooms available. And then I said, oh, mm-hmm. I can, I can, I can, I. So um, then she was also like, okay, you can live here. But I remember also it was mm-hmm. like tricky because I didn't have a credit report. You know, I was, yeah. they were like always it's like, eh. it's just like I don't know what to do. You don't have a credit report. Uh, yeah, be- yeah, because I think here people don't trust a lot other people. You know, maybe no. in Europe it's more safe. It's yeah. more like uh, more balance in the income, and uh, you know, it's just like uh, more regulated. And here it's just like you said, there are scammers or people who are in big debt or not paying. Yeah, or, you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? It's just like uh, more like a uh, yeah uh, place where you need to be cautious. And you know, I'm always careful with some insurance or you know like in a car i want to have like i i don't give my car to a friend because he's not in the insurance because right, if right. it crashes then it can be big 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 trouble there can be like there can be something uh somebody can go to hospital somebody can uh you know what i mean so yeah. it can be then like uh, it can be like a million dollar car which crash and then you are liable of that because your friend uh, drove the car and it's like it can be bad for the friend. You know, like yeah. there are a lot of risks you need to manage here. You need to check this. But usually I think your insurance, your car insurance usually covers it because I rented my car. Uh, I borrowed mm-hmm. my car. No, I lent my car to friends for like a couple of months. Uh-huh. And I before I did that, I checked and in my, whatever, I had the cheapest progressive uh-huh. insurance, but uh-huh. it was covered. Yeah, yeah, if you add if you add your friend to the insurance, oh, you but if your have, friend doesn't have like a driving license or something, ah, you know, yeah, okay, then yeah. it's different. No, yeah, no, yeah. then it's different. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, is there anything that you miss? Uh, so I, I'm gonna go to Turkey in a couple of weeks. Uh, okay. So I definitely miss the great food and family. You know, uh-huh. also family, friends. So yeah. gonna stay a couple of weeks. First, we will go to Paris, my girlfriend, her hometown. Okay. And uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, you know, love uh, spending time with friends and family, and the great mm-hmm. food, and also you know, I also like the culture when you are also in. Um, how can I say? Among the people you also grow up with, or you shared a lot, yeah. you know. It's. Uh, I mean, here now I have a lot of. I have a lot to do. I have a lot of mission. I enjoy. But now I go like two times a year back to Turkey mm-hmm. and I enjoy it. You know, like uh, I do a lot of things, see a lot of friends and see mm-hmm. family, spend uh, time for anything. And mm-hmm. I enjoy it. Yeah. It's different if you have the same roots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. And you can also share your progress in your life. Uh, your friends also progress and you catch up, you know. It's it's like what I like. For example, now uh, like last week I was in San Francisco, for example, and mm-hmm. I have some friends from high school, this German high school, and then uh-huh. we just met. They live in now in San Francisco. Uh-huh. When I was living in Europe, I I, I couldn't uh, be in touch with them for a while, you know. And okay. after years, you regroup again, and like uh-huh. you know each other since you are ten, so you are like good friends. Yeah, but it's been some years, and then you connect again. It also happened also in LA, for example. I have friends which I lost touch for several years, and now we we hang together. You know, like we go, oh, let's get an ice cream. Oh, let's get a let's have a coffee. You know, like it's just like living in an, another place it connects you with those people again. It does. So it's it like, does. Yeah, it's, it's I uh-huh. like it. Yeah, I like it. That's true. And is there anything that you don't get? Like still? Here in the US? Uh Yeah, it's just uh, many times people don't give you a feedback. They uh, they ignore uh, conflict. They they don't want to get into conflict. Like, Uh for example, because I have a lot of German culture, you know, in my education, since high Uh school, you know, we are impacted. uh, We had a lot of also literature or living in Germany, people are very direct. I like it. I'm also very direct. And people share with you feedback, negative or positive, you know. In the yeah. US, people have a tendency to, you know, have like a nice um, chit-chat, small talk. Yeah. Maybe more than Europe, more than Germany. Maybe yeah. more like, you know. But yeah. then if you really want to have like a real conversation, they uh-huh. will. there are a lot of people escape it or a lot of people okay. ignore it you know mm-hmm. this i still don't get it really okay it's like why do you for example somebody tells you something and invites you or like talks about okay we can talk about this let's do it let's uh, this and then you send an email or you send an sms or you you might you want to follow up they ignore like ghost Okay, it's like, it's like you can say, ah, okay, you know, I, I'm not interested, or we talk, you know, like just like why that's I don't really get it. I mean, I also don't like conflict, <laughs> so I can, yeah, I can relate, but, <laughs> but um, but I know it's true. I know from my friend, she's always very frustrated because she's on a job hunt right now, uh-huh. and whenever she um was in a job interview. And doesn't hear back, and then like later on, she hears like, "Oh yeah, that position is filled by, but not directly from the hiring people, but then mm-hmm. somebody around the corner you hear it from." So it's like, "Hey, wouldn't it be nice to let me know what's going on?" Yeah, because well, right? then I can move on too, you know. Yeah, especially in business, uh, not a lot of feedback. Like you make the meeting, you okay, you are about to sell something, or you know, and then nothing comes or it's just yeah. like uh, they don't uh, they don't feel any responsibility to give you any feedback or it's just like if it happens now but I I observe this okay it is what it is you know American term it is what it is <laughs> it is what it is that's why I like do a lot of like okay let's do marketing and if people are interested they will come and they will just 
buy it immediately. They will do something. They will, if they really want to be a part of something or if they really need it, they follow up either uh-huh. it's weekend or not. So I changed my strategy here. It's like a big ocean and people who want to do something, they will be there. They will come to you. And if they don't, you don't need to follow up three times, five times and push people, you know? So I think it's a difference. Yeah. Maybe that's why also like you always have these endless uh, sales marketing people. Yeah, on the yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. They is like push, 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 sell, sell, sell. Yeah. Yeah, but it's really also, hard to be seen. Do mm-hmm. you have that in LA where you are too? That people are knock on your door to sell you stuff? Like uh, come to the apartment? No, yeah. I don't have it. Oh, you're so lucky. No, like like here, it's all the time. Like knock on the door, and uh, then it's like here, Spectrum. Use my internet here. We here, new Windows <laughs> here. When they call you. I don't like when they call you with phone, for example. I don't really like it. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't, don't pick up me. when I don't know the number yeah. anymore because it's uh, like 99% of the times it's like some sales or some scam. Mm-hmm. But like the people that are knock on your doors, that it's like, oh, because I'm... Yeah, I, I never hit it. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe maybe I, it's not allowed in California or it, did it happen to you in California too? Or? Uh, no, it didn't happen to me in California, but also like okay. we didn't live in a house. Mm-hmm. You know, so okay, maybe so I think more approachable. In, okay. uh, so like now it's like different. When we were in an apartment, then mm-hmm. I guess people are always like assuming they are just renters anyway. They're not doing anything uh-huh. or whatever. But here it's like, oh, this could be a, ho- a homeowner. Uh-huh. Let's sell her everything. And how do people usually react when they hear you're from Turkey? Uh, yeah, they are either motivated to travel for a vacation or, uh-huh. you know, or they've been there, they like it. They like people mostly traveling to Turkey. They have a great time, you know, because yeah. uh, they get a lot of attention. So we have a warm uh, culture, mm-hmm. especially I even worked in the marketing campaigns of promoting Turkey. With the ah, tourism okay. ministry or Turkish Airlines, so I I interacted a lot of with a lot of people mm-hmm. around this topic as well, mm-hmm. and you know like uh, we used to also communicate the hospitality of people in Turkey, you know, warm culture and uh, hosting and making you feel home. So it's mm-hmm. like part of the culture, and uh, I always hear like uh, positive thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's always vacation kind of right because it's like a vacation spot. Uh-huh. I would say yeah, 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 a lot of beach and also history and you know like uh, now we got Göbekli Tepe for example, the oldest place in the world, like right, ten thousand exactly. BC. Yeah, so it's like uh, you know or like um, amazing food. Now I have friends here, for example, two Turkish friends. They mm-hmm. have an event called Turkish Breakfast Club, but it's uh-huh. very California style. So it's just like very hipster. It's like an expensive event. They uh-huh. dance, they party, and there is like a big Turkish breakfast uh, table, you know. And so uh, just... people joining are not Turkish. Most of them are like American or, you know, like California people. So it's a good example. Oh, nice. So it's just like almonds and olives and spread. Yeah, all that. All yeah, that yeah. Uh, a lot of food and then like uh, mixing it with the... Uh, Venice or you know like LA oh, lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's fun. That's yeah. fun. How did you make friends? Okay, so I'm quite a, a social guy. I love you mm-hmm. know going out, meeting people, going to events. I think like uh, if I can give some tips to people who want to socialize, you know, like uh, people are very open in the US first, and uh, hobbies. And uh, going to events, meetup groups, for example, is quite Uh nice because people socialize in a specific, you know, like uh, topics and people love having hobbies also. Like even you can go to, for example, um, like here comedy shows are quite popular, right? Right, right. You You don't need to just go to a comedy show and listen to it. You can go to an improv. Right, you can practice yes. your English and you cannot be part of the conversation. 
And after the improv, people go have a beer and, you know, chat. Or like uh, whatever you do, let's say you are like when I was living more near to Hollywood, I used to go to events of Hollywood industry meetup. I'm not in Hollywood, but I love to go there and talk with like actors or screenwriters or, you know, ah, so it's okay. like uh, they, they do like, of course, if you if you have something, you can contribute to them and right. you can you can be part of the conversation. That's important. And ah. also when I have... Uh, you know, like a, a friend or a business connection, or I always like, I don't expect people to reach out to me. Some people are like that, you know, like they like to be snobby or like they mm-hmm. go home and maybe watch a movie or I don't know. So I love reaching out to people, listening to their stories, catching up with them. And it teaches me like love of learning. So yeah. it also creates, you know, like a, a, a lot of connections or, do intros to people to each other Mm -hmm. or yeah i think that's quite a way to socialize if you you know i remember like when we first moved to austin i also joined me meetups Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i never went (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) because i'm not really like an extroverted person Uh i um so I like meeting people, but like one on one, you know. So, but if I'm just new to a huge group, I just end up talking to nobody because uh-huh. I, I don't know like where to start. You know, I'm not I'm not like going like, hey, here I am. You waited just for me, you know. So I'm like, yeah, maybe we can go me. to a book club or something uh, more like. Into- I mean, now I'm good, you know. <laughs> but but like in the beginning, it was like I don't know anyone. How are they gonna do this? Yeah, yeah, I think it's like uh, you have your f- uh, first circle and uh, friends, like school friends or family, you know, and then you have your more like business circle. Mm-hmm. That's also a way. And you yep. have your hobbies. I think yep. three, three things, you know. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Um, I think I mostly got it, I think. Yeah, cool. We had a nice chat. Yeah, we had a nice chat. Uh, thank you for being on my podcast. Yeah, actually, I do have one more question. So what is mm-hmm. your plan now on staying? Well, you're just going to renew your visa over and over? Uh, here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I might get a green card soon and have a residence permanent, uh, permanent uh-huh. residence permit. And we, are allow, uh, we, we love living in LA right now, so it's, uh, it's good. If my girlfriend uh, gets another job, she's more in corporate. I'm very flexible as okay, an entrepreneur. Yeah. Maybe we might relocate. She okay. was, uh, you know, uh, maybe New York or, you know, like even uh, so. But now we are good in LA. But maybe mm-hmm. in the future, Paris or London or, you know. Okay, even, you're you're uh, open anything. to anything. I'm not really embraced the uh, lifestyle here. We love it. So it's uh-huh. just like, uh, yeah. But like yeah. I have still uh, until end of next year, 2025, okay. still uh-huh. uh, my like um, visa is continuing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So no problem with paperwork. Yeah. Well, they always take so long. And I, I observed since I'm in the US, people who just want to sort it out, sort it out really. I didn't see many people who had problem. But sometimes it takes a lot of work. You send documents, yeah. it comes back, you know. For me, it took maybe three weeks to get the visa for three years. It was quick, you know. Yeah. Just like, but I had really like a big, big, like a file because yeah. I already had a lot of documents about me archived. Right. Yeah, it's like okay. my hobby. So, <laughs> I archive okay. everything. Yeah. So you already had everything in order yeah. and then you just. If you are like, like that, you submit. Yeah. And what is the O2 visa? O1 is like uh, oh, O1. for. For creatives, for artists, for entrepreneurs, it's like you ah, prove your you expertise. Have the visa. Yeah, so you prove yeah. your expertise in the in the field you are working. For me, it's like creative technology, multimedia. You know, I had like ah. awards or interviews, or you know, like I've I been see. doing like I oh. was on TV for that. Like, so it's like if you are in media, you know, if you if you are a little bit like well known, you can get it. Ah, uh, okay. So you are um, 
you already kind of had your portfolio there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, got it. Sure. All right. All right. Um, no more questions, I guess. That was Vadi. Um, for me, it's always super interesting to hear what kind of visa people are on. So Vadi was the first person I met who was on an O1 visa. And I wish him good luck on his green card and on all his paperwork. I hope everything will work out. Okay, so that was it from this week. I hope you enjoyed this episode and you will tune in again uh, for a next episode. Next week, episodes are always dropping on Thursdays. And if you want to reach out to me, then you can do so in sending me an email, worldscollide123pod at gmail.com. Or you can find all the information in the show notes, like TikTok, Instagram, threads. There are also two links from Vadi in the show notes, so check them out. And you can also just binge all the other episodes if you want. I see you next time. Bye.